Alright, how are we doing? Any better? Alright, sound okay? I apologize, I don't know uh, why my Adobe plugin crashed a couple times, but I'm going to try to keep going here. Um, talking about uh, the importance of a free food system for, for our freedom. Um, as we all know, food is an essential part of life, and we can't live without food. Um, if someone takes our food, um, we get pretty upset, often willing to to give up a lot, either give up a lot uh, to get that food, get a get uh, a sense of security in our food, or we uh, start rioting, like uh, like uh, a lot of the Middle Eastern riots were related to the high cost of food. In fact, the incident that sparked the Middle Eastern uh, uh, revolutions, uh, the the Northern African re revolutions, was a uh, a young man who was a fruit vendor, and uh, he was going out in the city, uh, he'd buy some fruit and uh, go out and sell it on the streets, and the police harassed him because, uh, oddly enough, he didn't have a permit, just like you have to have a permit to sell food in the U.S., you had to have a permit here in the city of Tunisia, and uh, the police were harassing him, and uh, just a second. Speak loud and clear. All right. Uh, the police were harassing him and uh, actually stole his food legally. Stole his food. Um, confiscated it. And uh, they actually had a, a systematic harassment. And uh, in this case, uh, he was humiliated enough that he went to in front of the um, government building, tried to get an audience with some government officials, they refused to see him, and uh, he set himself on fire right there in front of the government building. That was the tipping point uh, with a lot of young people who were unemployed, um, sympathized with his frustration, just trying to earn a living selling food, and uh, it started, uh, started protesting, started arguing that government shouldn't be uh, messing with people's livelihoods like this by requiring permits. Um, I'm actually going to be uh, going to be talking on how to make money starting a food or agricultural business. There's a whole bunch of different options. Even if you don't think you're interested in food or interested in growing things, there's a lot of ways to make money on this. Um, and so get uh, get back here on the channel 10 a.m. tomorrow morning Eastern. And uh, I'll be talking on that. Um, so let's talk about our current food system. Um, why our current food system is unfree. Um, current food system, uh, first of all, is unfree because we don't play any part in it. Sent to other than consumers. Now we could uh, we could draw up a food system with the main parts. Um, we have producers, you know, growers, and uh, they send their food, grow their food, harvest it, send it to processors who can it, bake it, make it into soups, um, uh, make it into flour. They send it to uh, distributors and sellers. So you got your sales and distribution, and then uh, and then on to stores and restaurants. Put a U in there, and then finally gets to the consumer. Everyone along here plays a part in the food system. Everyone along here. Uh, is productive. Everyone along here uh, makes money off the food system, and the consumers spend their money um, and get whatever that the system offers. Now, being a uh, somewhat free market system, um, we have a lot of choice as to what we purchase. 
but uh, often uh, we voluntarily give up our freedom of choice and just buy whatever's cheapest, whatever's most convenient. Now that is the uh, the big advantage of the food system that we have is that food is very cheap. It's uh, probably a smaller part of our uh, labor and our income goes toward food than any other period in human history. Um, just spend uh, maybe 5% of our time and income on food as, uh, as a Western society, uh, whereas historically it's uh, at points been probably over 50% of time and energy going into producing and processing and making food fit to eat. Um, but for us, food, if we want, can be an afterthought. And uh, even if we spend some time on taste of our food, uh, spend some uh, money and put some interest into a little bit of uh, how healthy it is, um, it's still uh, partly an afterthought. It's not, uh, not something we spend a lot of time on. And uh, so the cheapness and convenience um, can be seen as an advantage of our modern food system. It also can be seen as a disadvantage. I know there's people that say, uh, you know, food, uh, producing food, eating it, spending time on it, it's an important part of the human experience. So, uh, if it's an important part of the human experience, um, we should participate more in it. Um, we, we'd be better off uh, spending time, spending our attention on our food. Um, there's a lot of problems that I can list with the current food system. Um, one of the most obvious ones is what it does to our, uh, what the food it produces does to our health. Um, the chronic diseases are rampant, uh, specifically diabetes, uh, heart disease, uh, because of low quality food. Um, there's various other autoimmune disorders uh, related to the foods we eat. Um, some people think autism is related to food we eat. So uh, growing concern among uh, children is uh, rising autism. Um, and pretty much uh, every chronic disease, cancer, um, you know, uh, re chronic diseases that uh, on uh, start uh, progressing uh, after birth, um, you know, that if they aren't genetic, or even if they're partially genetic, they're often late related to the food we eat. Um, other problems with the food system, uh, economic destruction. Um, our modern farming techniques uh, are credited with destroying uh, millions of tons of topsoil every year, washing it down rivers, um, sending phosphates down into the Gulf of Mexico that destroy the ecosystem and the waters. Uh, various other methods of uh, damaging the environment um, and sustainable farming techniques that are being developed and in some cases have been practiced for thousands of years uh, give the advantage of uh, like people say um, building up the soil, um, improving the topsoil, whereas uh, what modern farming techniques uh, they're production focused, all about getting the most out of your acre, um, don't spend a lot of uh, attention into keeping the soil uh, good for you know, past the next 10 years. Um, we have cheap fertilizer that can fix the topsoil. Uh, at least to an extent, but the result of that is a loss of vitamins, loss of nutrients in, the, in our food, um, and generally lower health. Um, the other problem, and that's going to be uh, of interest to a lot of the um, agorists, voluntarists, uh, libertarians, and people interested in freedom on here, is that the food system is controlled by corporations and the states. We have uh, 
we have a tremendous amount of state control, first of all, over the food system. Uh, there's just a, a food safety bill passed by the federal government in the U.S. Um, that essentially um, create, uh, gives the government control over uh, food that is grown and sold in the U.S. Uh, it specifically exempts small producers, and that's uh, advocates often point that out, that it exempts small producers. But if it exempts small producers, uh, small farmers, small food growers, that means it reserves the right to at some time exert that power. It means it has the power, it just chooses not to exercise that power over the food system. Um, also corporations, corporations often work hand in hand with the, the state. Uh, Monsanto is probably the most vilified food corporation in the U.S. and for good reason. Monsanto has a uh, number of patents on genetically modified corn and soybeans and other crops and has actually uh, actually has a history of destroying farmers' crops who didn't even plant their, uh, their crops that are protected by their intellectual property um, because actually um, pollen from Monsanto crops Monsanto genetically modified crops was blown over into the farmers' uh, fields and contaminated it with the genes that Monsanto uh, owns under the patent system in the U.S. and Canada. And so Monsanto has actually uh, forced these farmers to destroy their crops uh, under the legal system because uh, they claim to own the genetic material in these crops. Uh, Monsanto is also responsible for um, you know, various manipulations in the food system that are uh, um, trying to uh, basically uh, be the company that produces a lot of what we eat. Um, there's a number of large companies that produce uh, the meats. They have uh, massive meat operations uh, that watch documentaries like Food Inc. to find out uh, these operations uh, don't treat the animals well and don't treat the farmers well that produce them. The farmer is essentially uh, a sharecropper being in debt uh, over his head or her head because of the, uh, the system that the uh, companies have set up. Um, I know uh, Animal injustice is another problem with the food system. Um, there's disagreements on on what animal justice should look like. Uh, humans have been eating animals for you know, most of their history. Uh, some people say that uh, even killing an animal or using its products is unjust. Other people say uh, do whatever you want with animals. Um, you know they're not people. It doesn't matter. I take a middle ground to believe it's uh, just to treat animals well um, and uh, you know, uh, keep them in decent conditions. Um, you know, they're not humans that have a right to uh, certain certain things that we say humans have a right to certain justice, but uh, I believe it's just to you know, take good care of them. Um, and then other people disagree with that, but uh, that's another problem with the modern food system. So, now that we know uh, problems with the modern food system, what should what should the food system look like? I'd like to actually go into my own history, uh, history of my family, uh, and let me check to make it we're still on. Uh, my family actually, uh, family actually, uh, there we go. Hi, I'm an amputee. I'm a cancer survivor. I believe the limitations are in the mind. There we go. Yeah, my family has been involved in uh, creating their own food for a couple decades now. I'm 28. Uh, I'm actually the oldest of uh, several kids, and before I was born, my grandmother and mother had some friends, a friend 
a uh, young friend with cancer, and uh, the, they elected uh, because it uh, appeared that there was nothing they could do about the cancer when they found it. They elected not to use chemotherapy or other treatment. And, uh, instead, uh, feed this young lady uh, natural foods, high quality foods, and uh, although she eventually uh, succumbed to her cancer, she's able to live uh, a lot longer and a lot better than one would expect under uh, treatment of chemotherapy. Um, I'm not, you know, not saying that chemotherapy is bad to do, but it, um, you know, the natural foods, uh, the, the obvious uh, advantages of eating natural food, I started my mother and my grandmother into uh, an exploration of how they can eat better. Um, that's progressed over the next few decades. This was back in the 70s before I was born. Um, they started a natural food buying co-op, and there's probably one in your area if you're near any uh, medium-sized city. A uh, natural food buying co-op that buys uh, people get together, uh, start a club essentially, a buying club that will buy natural foods from a warehouse somewhere in the U.S. Uh, organic flour, um, organic oats, uh, prepackaged foods, uh, things. Uh, it's like a Whole Foods, except uh, because you're getting it through. Uh, a warehouse uh, on a big truck every month costs a lot less than Whole Foods. You know, it's a joke. Whole Foods, whole paycheck. Uh, yes, co-ops for the win. Nice. Um, so, uh, my my whole uh, memory of uh, growing up eating is eating uh, macaroni made with uh, organically grown wheat. Um, eating homemade bread made with uh, flour that may have come through the co-op and now we, I guess we purchased from a local grain mill that still operates on a water wheel with let's say, an electric backup that still still operates on a water wheel. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, it, it's uh, eating this way is actually uh, cost-effective if you're willing to put a little time into it um, for something like a co-op, something like uh, making your own bread, I guess, takes a little more time, takes some learning. But uh, it's actually, uh, my family has eaten uh, very cheaply because they have chosen to, uh, to avoid the local food system, not eat uh, box cereals and other things that cost a lot of money for essentially packaging and marketing and instead uh, concentrate on buying good food. Uh, so that's that's part of a local food system. Other other things my family has done, uh, my parents, my siblings, um, I have family members that actually work on an organic dairy and uh, it's actually raw milk dairy which is illegal to sell so they don't sell it. Um, you can find more out about how they legally distribute it for profit um, at 5 o'clock today Eastern uh, from Mookie Moss and he'll be talking about how he gave up state licensing for his goat dairy uh, by going to uh, essentially a co-op uh, uh, goat share system. Uh, really glad to have him on and to talk about the details of that stuff. Should be should be a great talk. He's a great activist. Um, been involved in the food system for many years, uh, and a great guy. Um, uh, so working at a dairy, uh, my sisters can bring home milk and create cheese, which is actually a lot easier than it sounds. Uh, to create mozzarella, you pour a bunch of milk in a big saucepan, uh, cook it a little bit, add some. Uh, Rennet or maybe, maybe citric acid, uh, and uh, you get uh, congeal, get the cheese congealing in there, and you just squeeze it together with your hands, uh, work with it a little bit, you get some delicious homemade mozzarella cheese. Other cheeses are more complicated to make. 
great craft to do. Uh, but in a lot of this is a lot of work. What if you're not interested in um, you know, going to all the work learning to do these homesteading type things? Um, well, that's where uh, that's where the community food system comes in. Um, you know, you can you can be something like a homesteader, essentially create food on your own, um, live off in the woods, grow your own corn, have a milk cow, uh, you know, grow some goats for meat, whatever. Um, but you're essentially uh, confining yourself to living an agrarian life. Most of us aren't willing to give that up. We may live in the suburbs, we may live in the city. Um, how do you create a free food system or part of a free food system if you're in the city? I actually just moved into the city and uh, my part of the food system right now is um, uh, with a couple friends of mine I'm starting an urban farm. Uh, Flint, Michigan has a whole bunch of vacant land if you've been following the news in Flint. There's uh, a lot of people that are moving out. Flint's actually half the population it was uh, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And a lot of vacant land, a lot of houses being torn down that can essentially be had for free to grow crops on. So we're growing greens uh, using a system called spin farming. I'll be talking about that more uh, tomorrow at 10. Uh, for my ne next talk, I'll talk about different ways to make money on growing or producing food. Um, but again, that's a career. If uh, what if you're just uh, what if you have have a regular 40-hour a week job? What can you do? Uh, if you have even a small amount of land, like I'm saying four foot by eight foot area of land that gets a little bit of sun in the summer. You can start a garden. You can grow an amazing amount in a four foot by eight foot area using uh, square foot gardening techniques. Um, you can, you know, create so the freshest, best tasting food you'll eat because it comes right out of the garden. Um, give it away to your friends. Uh, barter for things. Uh, it's a great way to participate in counter economic activity, black market activity. Um, getting your food out of the corporate and state system and growing it you know, without permission, growing good stuff, being a bit more self-reliant. And then there's the neighbors, there's the community, because if, uh, if you're in the city, you're supposed to be part of the community. If you're in the suburbs, you're part of the community. Uh, it's uh, natural for people to work together, create a, create a market, um, and support each other by trading, by gifting, by looking out for each other. And so, if, uh, if you're in the city, there's probably a community garden somewhere nearby that a nonprofit or a volunteer has started. You can help out with that, get a part of the produce, um, help other people out by getting produce to them um, for free or for low cost. You can grow your own garden. Um, what else can you do? If you're not willing to uh, do that, if that's not something you're interested in, shop at your local farmer's market. Um, uh, around here, uh, every small town has a weekly farmer's market. Uh, Flint actually has a three-day week big farmer's market with some uh, great local produce you can get. Uh, year round, open year round. Um, so you can support a lot of local growers to get uh, much better food than you can get from the grocery store, much fresher. Uh, and often for not a whole lot higher cost uh, compared to the grocery store. Uh, you're helping create a free food system by putting your dollars into a, a system that has less involvement with the state corporate system. Um, there's actually been a lot of talk by some friends of mine in the urban farming movement about creating a just food system. <coughs> Excuse me, it's dusty in here. Um, you know, they're focusing on food justice, getting good food to people who are poor, make rent, 
um, who don't have a lot of opportunity to uh, to buy good food because organic food at the grocery store or Whole Foods is expensive. People can't afford that. Um, so uh, there's a lot of work being done by this, what are essentially progressives, um, some think tanks, some government grants on to how to get good food to uh, poor people. And uh, one of the most important elements that I've heard out of uh, some of the some of the discussions that they've done is that helping people to grow their own food, create their own food system, uh, get local food into the corner store, the local grocery store, it's empowering. And for someone who doesn't have a job, doesn't think they can get a good job, uh, confined to uh, minimum wage, meaningless corporate jobs, uh, or living on state assistance, uh, it's incredibly empowering to be able to start a garden, to to create something for yourself, to get you out of that rut of, uh, of looking to organizations in the state to help you out, looking to employers to give you some minimum job. You can actually create things for yourself. You can actually produce for yourself um, to enhance your income, to enhance your way of life, and uh, to just uh, give you empower, uh, give you power to uh, to live better. You can. Uh, uh, it's, it's it's really mental freedom. It's uh, knowing that you can take care of yourself. You don't have to look to these organizations that are inhuman. They're not your neighbors. They're they're these big businesses that have certain interests at stake that you don't you're not even familiar with. Um, so it's been really great actually to work with these people and, and talk about how we can do this. We're talking about how to get local farmers uh, crops into uh, corner stores and small grocery stores uh, and uh, getting fresher food. You know, it's coming from California. Your food is at a minimum five days a week old when it uh, when it hits the shelves, uh, whereas uh, sales at the farmer's market are anywhere from three hours to no more than two days old. <coughs> so, how else can you create a free food system? Uh, let me see what kind of ideas I have here. Let's check my notes. Um, just uh, the idea of getting local, get um, creating local systems. Um, we often think uh, we're taught to think in terms of uh, national and state interests. You know what what benefits the country, what benefits the state. We need to think smaller than that. We need to think uh, what benefits the community. Um, you know, what benefits our neighbors. Uh, what, what benefits ourselves? Uh, you know, what benefits ourselves benefits our neighbors and vice versa. Um, so if we can if we can create a strong local food system, um, we can uh, we can stay free. And we can have have we can rely on having good food to keep us free. We're more empowered to uh, to think of freedom in other terms. Um, it's very hard for the state to crack down on people that are uh, living free with their food. Um, there's various instances of the state trying to crack down on Girl Scouts selling cookies on the sidewalk. Um, but if it's something small and local, people would recognize that's an evil thing, that Girl Scouts should be selling their cookies on the sidewalk. Uh, the hot dog stands should be on the street selling hot dogs you know, without a license. It's easy to understand in freedom activism. Um, I guess I'm about out of time. Let me see if there's any questions here.
Okay, someone wants me to say something about hemp. Yes, growing hemp is uh, has a lot of advantages. You can use it for fuel, you can use it for clothing. Uh, I'm not the best qualified to talk about hemp, but it has a lot of medicinal uses too. Uh, I'm not sure if hemp has medicinal uses. I know marijuana has medicinal uses. But uh, growing that is great. Do I have any experience with local farmers markets? Yes, I've been selling for the last year. Uh, are they amenable to barter exchanges? Uh, it depends. Yes, often, uh, certainly far more so than your grocery store. Um, I'm willing to do barter myself. Uh, it's hard to set up. <coughs> um, Why am I smiling when talking about hemp? Uh, yeah, butter can be hard to set up, hard to hard to agree on, uh, you know, what to barter. But I'm certainly open to it, and uh, a lot of other farmers and sellers are willing to consider that, especially if it's something significant or repeated. Um, saving seeds, yes, saving seeds is a great thing. Um, Right now, you know, most people buy their seeds from a big company. And there's certainly good companies to buy from, um, but uh, saving seeds creates another degree of independence uh, in your food system. Everybody's talking about hemp. Any other questions? Saving seeds is a pretty easy practice. There's some things to learn about it. Um, you know, I, Craig Shaw, uh, guy from the Traverse City area, does a lot of seed saving. I went to a class back in this January, and he has some great ideas on saving seeds. It can be uh, hard to do for over a few years. Saving food via canning, cellaring, brewing, cheese making. Yeah, it's something I didn't really get into, but um, storing food, obviously, uh, for long periods, via canning, uh, drying. My family uh, has a low temperature dryer um, that can uh, you know, dehydrate foods. Pineapple, uh, amazing dried pineapple. Um, with this low temperature dryer that will last for years, uh, you know, after it's dried out, keep it in a cool, dry area. <clears throat> how do you begin an agris business? How do you grow it? That's the question for tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Or, let me see here, there's a few other people. Who else is going to do this? Um, Mom Alley. Um, from Savannah, Georgia, I believe, is supposed to be doing a talk on starting a uh, uh, essentially a restaurant delivery business. Uh, she created the Last Biscuit, which uh, distributes food uh, to throughout Savannah um, for uh, for profit. Uh, talk to her. Um, her Get, get with her talk about how to set that up and how to survive when the state tries to shut you down. Um, goats. Again, listen to Mookie Moss at 5 o'clock. He raises goats. They're pretty awesome. Um, they're fun animals. Uh, they can be very destructive. You have to uh, pen them in. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot to learn about them, but there, there are a lot of work. Uh, chickens are an incredibly easy way to get started um, raising your own food. Uh, they make great pets, better than dogs or cats in my opinion. And uh, they give you an egg a day, at least in the summer. Um, exchange tokens. Yeah, silver. I'd be happy to sell vegetables for silver. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then uh, I also want to pitch 
Tad Getterman from Broken Sidewalk Farm. He's scheduled uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Sunday Eastern uh, talking on open source food systems, the work that he's doing in Texas. Uh, check into him. He'll be talking about some of the same subjects with a different perspective. So uh, go, go check him out. Um, see what he's up to Sunday at 5 as well. Any other questions? Gonna get off here, free up the channel, but uh, feel free to get with, with me on Facebook, David Derby. Um, I'm, on, I'm in the Agra IO group. Email me at david.derby at gmail.com. I'd love to talk growing with you, talk food preservation, um, food barter, uh, any of the other ways you can create a free food system. Uh, taking care of animals in the city often illegal but uh, I'll be talking tomorrow about how to how to do things uh, like get, uh, have chickens without getting into trouble um, with that I'm going to sign out uh, be sure to check out the next show which is here in the Agorism channel, uh, Seasteading with Tree Friedman, Agorism on the Frontier, also Angela Keaton and William Pearson and Jeff Zacker on pathology, uh, pathologicalization of female sexuality, security for activists, and creating alternative networks. Uh, peace out.